Hi everyone, welcome back. So now almost at the end of this particular lesson of connecting and expressing ourselves, okay? Now, let's look at what do we have in store for you in this particular section. What are we going to do here is, now that we have understood how to open, how to close our conversation, how to use um, emphasis, how to use pitch, loudness, and we also looked at pace, pause. Now the last thing is diction. So your words actually, your words and your body language helps you express yourself, helps you connect with your audience. Now how do you improve your diction? So how do you use the diction? And we will look at what diction is. How do we use diction to express and connect with our audience? Now, um, a thought before we start, okay? So we have only four contacts with people. Four contacts that we can make with people. And we are evaluated, which means we are judged and classified. Classification is giving them, keeping them in several buckets, okay? So this is A classification, A classification, B depending on the nature and traits. We have only four contacts with people and we are evaluated and classified by four things. So how are we judged by four things? By what we do. We are evaluated by people depending on what we do. How we look. Okay. What we say. And how we say. So, these are the four things, four contact points and this is how people judge us. What we do, our profession, our side hustles, what we do for our living, what we do for the society, what we do for our family, all these things put together. How we look, what is our personality, are we, when we are talking to people, what kind of body language we maintain, what kind of appearance do we have and it's not, not about the beauty. Okay, it's about how we dress, how we uh, use our body to connect and talk, that is body language. So, how we look, what kind of eye contacts do we maintain, so on and so forth. And then, what we say, what is it that we are saying or we are talking to them. And finally, how we are saying, so these are the four things on which people evaluate and judge us. How often are we judged by the language we use? So, when it's what we speak and how we speak, how often has it happened to you? Take a moment and think when you've been not judged, but given a remark on the language that you use, how we are talking, what kind of language you are using, what kind of pronunciation you have. Have you been evaluated, judged or given a remark on that? Just take a moment and think. Now. What is this diction all about? Diction. Diction is the careful selection of words to communicate a message or establish a particular voice or writing style. So here we are only going to concentrate on communicate a message or establish a particular voice. What kind of words we use to communicate the message is all about. The choice of words that we have comes under diction. For example, flowy, figurative language. It's flowery actually. F sorry, flowy. I'm so sorry. This is flowy. Flowy, which goes in a flow. Figurative language creates colorful prose. While a more formal vocabulary with concise and direct language can help drive home a point. I can say... Uh, this is good okay this is good or I can say this is awesome this is excellent so there are for one single word there are a lot of words that can be used to describe that same word every time you change that word and talk makes it more interesting okay so this is synonyms the kind of vocabulary you use in your speaking and obviously you have to use it in your writing then only you are speaking it however you will have to keep on practicing and keep on increasing that those words list so that you know which word to change and use another word instead of it, okay? So your flowy figurative language that you use when you talk 
again take a moment and think of speakers or your friends who you have seen talking or maybe your teachers when they use such beautiful words when they talk just one word will bring in so many meanings and it will make the entire speech sound so good so how well are you able to use these kind of words it all depends on how many words have been able to put in your kitty in your bucket or bag whatever you call it so choice of language or words the type of words a person chooses typically fall in within three distinct categories okay so there are three basic categories that are choice of words fall into formal casual and very informal very informal is when we converse or talk in at home with our friends that's very very informal too casual other than that it's formal and casual kind of words we use when we talk or when we converse okay what's your style what kind of words do you use what kind of language do you use when you talk several factors impact the style of your public speaking content there are a lot of factors which impact your content from the tone you hope to develop okay from the tone the tone of your voice you hope to develop to the mood and attitude you aspire to convey diction aids the process of content creation so from the tone of your voice okay to the mood that you want to set in if you want your audience to understand the worth of you know being very nice to people who are let's say not as privileged as you are or let's say who are specially abled what kind of words do you use to set the tone how is the tone correct or not the word disabled or differently abled so the word the word disabled has been replaced by differently abled so that the tone doesn't make you sad just think about your friends or a family that you know who have a differently abled child i know of many people i have one of my students whose sister is differently abled she cannot even get up from the bed if i have to talk about the special children do i say mentally retarded so what is the tone he or she is mentally retarded your intent is fine but you're saying mentally retarded the word is fine the tonality the tone that you have spoken that is why these words have been replaced by differently able special children so that you 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 build that you know aura of care and love and empathy and compassion around these people that is why these words have been replaced so the tone the mood that you want to set in for example you want to bring seed in a thought in the minds of people to take care of these differently able children okay the emotional mood that you set in the choice of words that you use other than the tonality the tone of your voice or the words the mood that you set in an emotional mood now let's say you want to talk about fun at school so it's not only about being very very formal fun at school have you been able to set the mood of your listeners of let's say you're talking to your friends and you want to say that listen friends irrespective of how much burden do we uh, we have on um, us regarding the the kind of subjects we learn can we not incorporate some fun during learning so set the mood incorporate fun during learning so whenever the choice of words that you use de- defines your motive defines what kind of speech you are going to deliver and attitude what kind of attitude you want to set in so when you're talking about different differently able children you want to set an attitude of helping nature you want to set a positive attitude among the people around you and you too want to show that i have a positive attitude towards these kind of people choice of words the choice of vocabulary the tone of the words all right the mood that you set in an attitude you aspire to convey these things can only help uh, diction can only help you in these things diction aids supports the process of content creation okay ask yourself these following questions what words can i use repeatedly 
to emphasize my main points. My main message is be compassionate towards special children. Okay, this is my main message. Now the same message I can, the message will remain the same, but I, the, the choice of words may differ. Okay, how do you make the people around you feel comfortable, feel happy? These people are the specially able children. How do you create a, a cohesive environment? Let's create a cohesive environment for specially able children. It's the same thing. You are trying to be compassionate. How can you be compassionate on, uh, when you create a cohesive environment? Cohesive environment means everyone will grow equally together. Same message can be delivered. The core message remains the same, but the choice of words differ. When you're using compassionate, cohesive environment, these kind of words hit a strike a chord, okay, to your listeners. You explain also the meaning of that, all right. What words can I use repeatedly to emphasize my main points? And you go back to how do we start writing our speech? We have a main, we have some main ideas, then sub ideas, then we associate these sub ideas with the main ideas. So it's that, emphasize my main points. Which words could I insert into my script to evoke a certain feeling from audience? Compassionate, care, love, cohesive. So when I'm using these kinds of words, I'm trying to create an environment of love, care. So what are the, what are the words I'm using that will help me evoke a certain feeling for my from my audience this is what my I want my audience to feel so your choice of words diction is all about that choice of language choice of words defines that what juxtaposition so there are certain other questions that I have for you what juxtapositions could I create to make a lasting impact on listeners juxtaposition is a word that maybe you're hearing for the first time it's about placing two things together and comparing. I had written a story about, and it's a true story. I was traveling to my office and in one of the junctions, that is one of the traffic uh, signals, I saw a young boy, maybe in the age of 12 to 13. He was peeping out of his window and there was a doggy with him, a very nice, you know, good breed doggy. And the doggy too was peeping out of the window. And then I realized that he's trying to look for something, this boy. He was in a Mercedes, big white car, the boy wearing white t-shirt, the doggy is also white, chauffeur driven car. He was trying to peep out of the window. And when I looked at him, then I saw another boy of similar age walking towards him and trying to sell him a toy. Okay, a toy as in it was, you get these pieces and you make a design out of it, some puzzle. He was, he wanted to buy that maybe, which is why he, he called this boy. Juxtaposition, two boys, same age group. One is, it's very hard for him to make his days meet. And this boy sitting in a Mercedes chauffeur driven car and trying to buy something from. Juxtaposition, what kind of environment did this child get? This one, the urchin, we call them urchin, street urchins who do not have a house, do not have parents, and what kind of position does this boy hold? So is the society giving equal opportunities for children to grow? Okay, juxtaposition is when you are comparing two things. So what juxtaposition could I create to make a lasting impact on listeners? And I think that is what I did now when I talk about, talked about these two boys. All right, or you can say, you can give an example, uh, create an imagery wherein you are showing that there is one big palatial building, huge building, and a hut near it. Juxtaposition. Both are houses. How do you create that imagery? How do you create that lasting impact? Again, and it's all social causes that you can talk about and bring in this imagery of juxtaposition. You can say that same, at the same place there are two houses. One is a palatial building. Like in Mumbai, you have seen Dharavi and then you've, got, you've seen Mukesh Ambani's house. Both are houses, you will only be living in one room. You will not be jumping from one room to the other room. However, there are privileged people, there are underprivileged people. So if you want to bring in these emotions, 
and you want to make your audience feel connected f uh, you want them to take any action that is when you will be ha you will have to use these dictions these words and create imaginary imagery what connotation meaning connotation means same word meaning some uh, same word has different meaning and you can supplement this word with another word what connotation do i want each word i say or write to have the meaning of the word what i want that meaning to come out that you will have to think through and finally will the words i use correlate with the theme of my speech i have used some flowery language and these the words that i have used has no connection with my speech so i have to be mindful when i'm using these words okay these words there is a song actually words your everlasting words can make me do a lot of things so words are so strong words have such impact on people's lives that is why you've got martin luther king you've got mahatma gandhi you've got subhash chandra bose you've got uh, apple ceo who whenever he used to talk steve jobs whenever he used to talk the choice of words that he had made a lasting impact to his I, i'm sure you know who steve jobs is so when these kind of people talk the words they use the way they express themselves the way they bring people together that is what of course we do we do not want maybe we our aim is not to become a a leader of that stature but at least we can reach up to some level at least we we will be able to let's start by inspiring people around us let's start by connecting with people around us let's start by expressing ourselves to people around us so that they take an action which i have faith and believe in so that is what diction choice of words is the kind of words i use so that people around me understand my message take an action and get lot of information from me so this was all about connecting with audience the last section that i have for you in this particular lesson of connection and expression is how do you connect and express yourself using stories and it's a very interesting session that we are going to look at so stay tuned thanks for watching